As more details come out about the sexual and physical assaults during New Year's celebrations in Germany and other parts of Europe, we find that some of the suspects are in fact asylum seekers and the cops are a little more honest about what they experienced uh, during that night. So according to the Washington Post, uh, authorities have revealed that at least 21 asylum seekers from the Middle East and North Africa are suspects in the New Year's Eve rampage of sexual assaults and thefts in Germany. Now, when we originally reported this story, we let you know that women were either being groped, there were some instances of alleged rape, and then the women would be distracted by the fact that they were being violated like that, and then they were victims of theft. Uh, they had their phones stolen, their bags stolen. Uh, there are more and more cases coming out. In fact, so far at least 170 victims have filed complaints, including 120 of them for sexual assault. Now, uh, to give you some more details on who the suspects are, um, out of the 34 suspects, again, 21 of them were asylum seekers, and the majority of those, a spokesperson said, arrived in the past year. Now, they're not all from Syria. In fact, a small uh, chunk of them are from Syria. The 34 allegedly include 10 Algerians, 10 Moroccans, 5 Iranians, 4 Syrians, 2 Germans, 1 American, and 1 uh, Serbian, and 1 Iraqi. So they're from all sorts of places, um, but again, 21 of them are asylum seekers. Now, it's unclear whether or not they actually did anything wrong, right, because they're suspects. That doesn't mean that they're guilty. So they're being investigated. I'm glad they're being investigated. But right now, uh, not only the authorities, but politicians in Germany are trying to reevaluate their policy on accepting refugees in. Over the last year, they've accepted 1.1 million refugees. Wow. And uh, Angela Merkel is now really reconsidering the methods they have in place to kind mm -hmm. of monitor monitor or vet them before they come into the country. So I want to be fair and honest in reporting this story. These are the facts that we have right now. Again, the story continues to develop, but I really want everyone to keep in mind that this is not a representation of all Muslims. However, you know, when you come from a culture or a country that believes women should be covered and if they're not covered then they're asking for it, well, some chunk of those people are going to carry out acts of violence like this. It's really a huge cultural difference that needs to be addressed. Uh, as far as Angela Merkel's mm. uh, perspective, you have to worry about the perception and what your citizens are going to think you're doing right. and if there's an unsafe environment not being created. So you have to worry about that stuff. But you have to also not convey that because of who these people are that this is why it's happening more. Right. I'm sure there's been plenty of assaults in Germany before this. This was a mass when it was New Year's Eve, maybe it was easy targets, all that type of stuff happens. So you can't just assume that just because this happened here, now this will end the problem. Because then if yeah. it happens again, what else do you have to do next? Right, so so I just want to elaborate on what I said earlier. You know, I, I apologize because I forget which European country it was, but there was a European country that we reported on fairly recently that is, of course, allowing uh, Syrian refugees to come in, but when they come in, there's a very, I think, fair education program that they have to go through. And the education program is basically getting them accustomed to the cultural differences in this European country. Mm -hmm. So the way that you treat women in our country is very different from the way that women are treated in your country. You know, not to, you know, violate your own beliefs or whatever, but these are our lies and, and you have to follow those you laws. You have to abide by you them. You have to abide by them. I think that that's fair. No, I think an yeah. onboarding process is so important in yes. all of this. Um, and I do think that you have to recognize that, of course, a country like Germany welcoming refugees does not have to welcome any sort of oppressive uh, rhetoric, ideology. ideology around treatment of women in particular. <laughs> I mean, I think what sounds like what went down on New Year's Eve in Cologne, um, I mean, because they were saying there's what, like a thousand men involved, like it just was this like rowdy, yes. out of control, like testosterone fueled hot mess, which I'm also like, if the German, po like, where were the German police on this? Like, I know they were just <laughs> yeah. like, completely ill-prepared, I so, guess, to handle it? No, the, the, okay, so when we originally reported the story, there was a lot of criticism of the media and the police. And, okay. and I was trying to really understand what they did wrong. So in terms of the media, they didn't initially report it. So on January 1st, one of the biggest news outlets in Germany just did not cover it, and people were upset about that. They took to the streets and protested it. But also on January 1st, uh, police officials released a statement about the New Year's Eve celebrations in areas like Cologne, and the headline to that press release said the following, festive atmosphere, uh, celebrations largely peaceful. 
They weren't peaceful. I don't know why. They didn't, they maybe they didn't want to admit their own yeah. impotence right. in the situation. And now there's a cop coming out, um, an unidentified cop saying, look, we just weren't ready. Okay, so mm. let's, let's go to that statement. Graphic number 17. The task forces could not cope with all the events, assaults, and crimes. There were just too many happening at the same time. Again, that's an unidentified senior officer. Now, Angela Merkel has responded. And keep in mind that she's been very resistant to all of the fear-mongering and the alarmist uh, you know, commentary about refugees. But now she's saying we must examine again and again whether we have already done what is necessary in terms of deportations from Germany in order to send clear signals to those who are not prepared to abide by our legal order. Certain regulations are now being thrown around, maybe random checks on um, some of these refugees. But again, I just... It's a nuanced, complex issue, and there are extremists on both sides. There are those who are like, no, 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 they're all innocent. There's nothing wrong. They're not doing anything wrong. And then there are those who are like, no, no, no they're Muslim. Just because they're Muslim, they're all bad. No, it's way more nuanced than that. So please don't fall victim to that very simplistic way of thinking. So sexual assault and rape, you know, I'm not a sociologist, so mm -hmm. I don't know. All I know, it's pretty prevalent in all societies. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, look at the Catholic Church. Right. Look at that. What happened? Just raping kids and covering up and to, at the very top. And these aren't just morons on a street on New Year's Eve. Right. So, uh, in fact, the Kaiser Foundation said that they did a survey. One in five women will be uh, raped or attempted raped while they're in college. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, it's an epidemic on yeah. college campuses. So all of a sudden we go, ah, blah, blah, blah. but we have a big rape culture problem here in the United States, right? What's interesting is the same people that demonize all Muslims are also the same people that look at the rape issues in this country and they deny it. They deny that we have a rape problem in this well, country. Well, there was that bad story in Rolling Stone, so right. we can and, forget about it. And that, that story in Rolling Stone makes me livid. Because Such a setback. It, it's, it's a setback. It makes people question any and all people who come forward, honestly, courageously come forward yes. and talk about their own And that's another thing. So with one in five saying they've been assaulted or raped while they're in college, most of the assaults, they say a lot of them go unreported, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. people don't want to report them, A, because they know the person or they were drinking at the time, or because they'll be demonized and what mm -hmm. have you, and they're shamed mm -hmm. by it. So it's probably even higher than that. There's, there's really no way to gauge. There's, there's controversy over to what the rape statistics are in the United States, but it's obvious there's a problem. And so I don't want to say it's just this cult. People want to go, oh, look, their culture is rapey, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, what, that's what's happening right now. And so I don't know enough about their culture to push back, but I do know about my culture. Yeah. <laughs> so Look, I, I don't think that their their culture is rapey, but I I think it's right because it's more indisputable. Than yeah, it's but... indisputable that there are certain expectations for women, and the expectation is be modest, cover up, because if you're not covered, well then you're asking for it. And when you have that kind of thought process. Well, you need to learn real quick when you're going to go to a different country that has different values because mm -hmm. that is unacceptable. The thing is, I think part of what Jimmy was saying, that whole thing, that mm -hmm. mantra, uh, cover up, be modest. And it sounds like it's coming from that particular culture. Yes. That's said here. It's said it here. It is said no. here. And every time, right, no, it that you were here, and every it, time it, it is fault. said here, it's condemned specifically by people who work on the show, specifically by yes. people like mm -hmm. me. Yeah. So yes. if I'm going to condemn it by people who have that ideology in our own country, I sure as hell am going to condemn it if right. people have that ideology in other countries. I don't care if it's a predominantly Muslim country. I don't care if it's a predominantly Christian country. When you have that kind of thought <clears throat> process, it's dangerous. Women are not asking for it because they're wearing revealing clothing, okay? And if you think that way, well then you are misinformed, you believe in very violent actions toward women who just want to live their lives as free individuals, and I'm against you. I'm that, against you. That's that's if you want to look at you. this, what happened um, in Cologne as a larger, we're talking a global patriarchy issue, mm -hmm. right, where uh, women are treated like property and um, depending on what they're wearing, there's all sorts of judgments made, made about what they're inviting yeah. sexually. Yep. Um, but the, the, this story is so frustrating because I think we all know, and Anna, what you were saying is that, it, is that it's going to be used as a cudgel to sort of like beat the same old drum of racism and, and bigotry, and bigotry yeah. about um, the people from the Middle East that are, are these refugees and talk about what their, what their cultures say or don't say. And, you know, yeah. it's tough because, I, you know, like Bill Maher's whole line right around this is that liberals won't admit the the truth about Islam. Jesus Christ. Right. So, I mean, I, you know, I just, when I was reading this, I, 
And I haven't, I mean, maybe Bill Maher's already commented on it, but I was like, you know, what would his take on this be, knowing what I know about yeah. his perspective on it? Mm. Which obviously, Jimmy, you were like, uninterested. <laughs> it's just, you know, yeah, that's what it is. We're, we're two guys. We're, we're apologists for fucking rapers. That's what we are. We're apologists for religion. We couldn't hate religion more. Yes. What we are is we're progressives. So what do progressives do? Progressives always are looking to see who's being oppressed. And who's ever being oppressed, that's who I'm in favor of, right? Right. So if uh, if an Israeli soldier oppresses a Palestinian, I'm in favor of the Palestinian. The Palestinian goes home and then oppresses his wife, I'm for his wife. Yeah. So I'm for who's ever being oppressed in any situation. And that and th this idea, though, but the, the whole idea is that there's these guys are dirty, right? Muslims are dirtier, they're worse, they're not reformed, all that stuff, right? So that's mm -hmm. it's that... It's okay to be racist towards them. It's that okay. It's like you get a blank check for it. Now it's okay. And people, and and it, that's what racist, by the way. So I, I know lots of racists. I come from the racist parts of Chicago. And what racists think is that they just have the courage to say the truth. Right. And that's exactly yeah. what you're hearing now. So they don't think they're bigots. They don't think they're racist. They just think they have the guts to tell the truth about those dirty fucking Muslims. And that's exactly how. So you have to push back against that. And again, I'm not a sociologist. I don't know enough about their their culture. Mm -hmm. But I know that uh, uh, people who do know about it have told me that the uh, Islam in America has been reformed. Right. So now we're talking about a, and uh, we how about they when they went with the Bible and they said it was the Quran mm -hmm. and all those people, yeah. holy shit. And they tricked them. And so the books yeah. are just as bad. And, and and that's a good point. And I think it's important to also be able to differentiate between the fundamentalists and just mainstream Muslims, mainstream Christians. I mean, I would never use fundamentalist Christians as the representation of all all Christians. Sure. Right. I mean, my mom's Christian. My mom is deeply Christian, but she is a good person. She, she doesn't is, want you to carry a rape baby if you're 10 years old to term? No, she would not want me to like, carry Like Mike Huckabee? Exactly, yeah. right. There's fun, so, we're against fundamentalism. There are different interpretations of the exact same religion. And so to use the most extreme examples as a representative sample of an entire religion, I think, is beyond unfair, regardless of what the religion is. It could be Judaism, it could be Christianity, it could be Islam. It's just not the reality. Again, there's nuance, and for some reason, people, especially in the United States, are allergic to nuance. They're they lazy. just yeah. And they're only and they're well, only allergic. By the way, they they only have an allergic reaction to re religious violence and only certain religious <laughs> violence, right? Other religious violence, like in Colorado, they're completely okay with it. The Iraq War, they're okay with because that wasn't religious, even though George Bush said it was. The guy who instituted it said it was. So that's my problem. They're very selective in their outrage of violence. I think as a progressive, I'm consistent, mm -hmm. and that's what George Carlin talked about. You have to be consistent. So I'm consistent. In, in my allergic reaction to violence of all kinds. I just don't have a fetish for a certain kind of religious violence, which is what it seems like they have. Am yes. I wrong? No, you're right. You're right.